Hello everyone, if you don't know me already, I'm Tara, the dance doctor, welcome to my channel. In today's lesson, I'm going to be presenting some different options that we have for hip actions within the three Kizomba main basic steps. So these are concepts that I've kind of thrown into different Kizomba routine tutorials that I've done over the years, but I thought it would be nice for everyone to have these all in one place for those of you who are looking to um, make some more diverse choices in your Kizomba dancing. Really quickly before we get into the lesson, I just want to give you another update. Last week I announced that I was adding dates to my Havana retreat and doing another mini retreat from January 15th through the 19th. As of right now, there are only a couple spots left on that retreat. So if you are interested in coming to Havana with me and taking dance classes and going out at night and you only have a short period of time off work or you don't have a huge budget for the trip, this mini retreat could be perfect for you. So that's January 15th through the 19th of 2024. If those dates work for you and you've always wanted to go to Cuba and you are an avid follower of mine, this is the perfect time for you to have this incredible experience. So reach out to me if you are interested at dancedoctoronline at gmail.com. We can schedule a virtual meeting and talk about the logistics of the trip and I can let you know all of the details that you need to know. So reach out to me if you are interested in the mini retreat. Don't wait because the reason that I added the mini retreat is because on the last trip, a bunch of people reached out to me after the trip was already full. And so I made this trip to accommodate the overflow and also um, to give more people um, the opportunity to have this experience with me. So reach out to me right now, pause the video and email me if this trip sounds interesting to you um, so that I can make sure that you have a spot. As always, don't forget to give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and turn on the post notifications so you can see when I upload more stuff like this. Now let's get dancing. Okay, so we are going to be starting with basic one or our slow basic. Now I'm not going to be doing the basic hip action um, today because the whole point of this video is to give you other options that you can use in your Kizomba. But if you are interested in how to perform just the basic hip action in Kizomba, I recommend you watch my Kizomba Basics 1 video, which I will put a link to in the corner right now. So if you aren't just familiar with basic Kizomba hip action, watch that video first and then come back to this one, okay? So the two hip actions that we are going to be working on in our basic one is a segmented hip action where I'm doing two separate hip actions per each one step. And the second one is a reverse figure eight, okay? So we're gonna start with the segmented hip action. So in this one, I am going to place my foot on the floor, but I'm going to leave my hip behind, okay? So I'm gonna go step and I'm leaving my hip behind or I am tilting it down toward the bent knee. Now. I'm going, to, that's my first beat. I'm gonna split my second beat into two mini beats and I'm gonna go hip, hip, okay? So I go step and now I'm letting my hip drop to the other side and I'm also bringing it slightly forward so that I can emphasize the movement back, okay? So I go step, I'm gonna press forward forward and and over to the side and then I'm going to tilt the pelvis actually tilt it forward so that my butt goes back okay so I'm going step and up okay again step hip hip so as you can see my hip is tilted to the right now I'm going to bring it down into neutral and then I'm going to send it back on this one side. Now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. My hip is already where it needs to be, so I'm just gonna step without moving my hip, and then I'm gonna go drop back, step, drop back, step, drop back, step, drop back, step, 
drop back. If you're having difficulty with this, chances are you're not bringing your hip forward a little bit when you drop. So as you can see, I'm here. I have this anterior tilt in my pelvis, which I tend to always have when I'm dancing. But when I do the segmented hip action, I need to actually let it scoop forward a little bit so that I have somewhere to go on that second part. So I go step, hip, and. Step, hip, and. Step, forward, back. Step, forward, back. Step, forward, back. Okay, I'll do it facing away. Step, forward, back. Step, forward, back. Step, forward, back. Step, forward, back. And of course I'm saying forward, back, but as you can see, my hip is also changing sides. So when I do step, when I come forward, I'm also um, dropping one side of the hip, okay? Let's do that one more time. Step, forward, back. Step, bring it down and back. Step, down and back. Step, down, back. Step, down, back. Step, down, back. And all of the variations that I'm going to be sharing with you today are things that you can do regardless of what the leader is doing. So, I mean, within the step that he's leading. So if he's leading basic one, instead of just doing one push two, three push four, you can go one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and. And that will not affect what the leader's doing because I'm still stepping in the same rhythm as the leader, I'm just doing something different with my hip, okay? Now, our second option, as I mentioned, is a reverse figure eight. So, <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is I'm going to send the hip or the, the butt cheek of the foot that I'm stepping on back on that diagonal. So if I'm stepping on my right, my hip is gonna go back and around. So the trajectory is here and around. Now I'm gonna go step, hip goes back and around. Step, one side of the hip goes back and around. And so what's happening is I'm ending up slightly off center. So I go step, back and around, and as you can see, my belly button ends up a little bit um, like an eighth of a turn uh, rotated off of the center, step and around. Step, back and rotate. Step, send it back and rotate. Step, send it back and rotate. And on this one, you wanna be really careful that you're not involving your shoulders or your chest, as we know, Kizomba is led from the chest, and so when we move our chest away from the leader, we're creating like the equivalent of like static on, um, in a telephone call. Um, so we wanna make sure that our communication's really clear. So when I do this action in the hip, I am only using the hip, but I'm keeping my chest straight with the leader. So I'm going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I will say in this variation, I'm straightening my knee a lot sooner than I would in another action. So in this one, my knee doesn't straighten until the very end, if at all, but in the reverse figure eight, I'm kind of straightening my knee to send the hip back and around, back and around, back and around, back and around. So I step onto a bent knee initially, and then I push into that knee to help me create that reverse semicircle, okay? So now we are going to try both of these hip actions with music.
moving on to our basic two, the two options that we are going to be learning today are the following. We're going to go one, two, and three, four, and five, six, and seven, eight, and, or one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay? So, when we bring our feet together, anytime that the leader brings our feet together, we have the option to create different actions in the hip. And so we're just using basic two as kind of a conduit to learn those actions. So I'm going to the side. One, our first option is to do a pendulum swing with the hips, okay? So I go side, and when I go to the side, I need to end up with my hip over here so that I can swing it over and come back, okay? And then I go to the other side, send that hip over, switch, switch, side, switch, switch, side, switch, switch, side, switch, switch, okay? So if differentiating between uh, a piston hip action and a pendulum hip action, or even if those words don't mean anything to you, but you're like, how is she doing that with her hips? If that's something that's difficult or confounding for you, I do recommend you check out my Patreon page, patreon.com slash dance doctor. You can subscribe to the quick tip tier, which is only $5 a month, and you get a new quick tip lesson every week, and I just uploaded two different lessons about these specific actions and really getting into the specific technique on how to achieve a piston or a pendulum action in the hips, and we have some practice exercises. So if you really wanna get a little bit deeper into how to achieve these hip actions, go and subscribe to my Patreon page, patreon.com slash dance doctor, okay? So we are going side, Swing, swing, side, swing, swing, side, swing, swing, side, swing, swing. A few common errors that my students make when they do this action is they won't swing their hip all the way in one direction or the, or the other. So we'll go one, two, one, two, something like that, which makes it look a little bit jerky or they'll involve the upper body, which we definitely don't want to do, or they do the tap too quickly, okay? So the timing of the basic two, when we do it correctly, is one, two, and, not one and two, one and two, one and two, which is what a lot of my students do when they're learning this hip action. So it's really important to complete that first count. One, really get that hip all the way over there. Two, and. Just isolating the hips, making sure the upper body's staying level, and then going to the other side. One, two, and. One, two, and. One, two, and. One, two, and. Okay, so that's the first option. The second option is to create a circular action in the hips when I bring my feet together. So we go one, two, and one, two, and one, two, and one, two, and. So I'm going step, and then when I bring my feet together, I'm going to create a circle in the direction that I step. So I'm going one, around, and one. Now I'm gonna go this direction. So I'm bringing my feet together and my hips are also going in that same direction. Step, around, and we still need to finish to this side before we step out. So I go step, around, finish, step, around, finish, step, around, finish, around, and one, around, one, around, around, and around, okay? So now let's try those two hip actions with music.
Okay, now moving on to basic three. The first action that we're going to do is the same as the first action that we did in basic two. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, and four, five, six. The second action that we're going to do is a wave, and we're also gonna practice um, doing this little hip action in our walk. So it looks like this. We're gonna go and one, two, three, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. I teach so much salsa that five always comes after three. <laughs> anyway, okay, so let's get into the two hip actions. So we are going walk, walk, hip, hip, walk, walk, hip, hip. So it's good to get used to doing that action like I said, every time you bring your feet together, you can use that action in the hips. So this is just another way to apply that. So we're going walk, walk, feet together. So before the feet come together, sorry, walk, walk. My hip has to get over to this side first before I can do the hip, and then it needs to come back to where it started. Walk, walk, hip, hip, walk, walk, finish, 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 hip, hip, okay? And I am doing this action a bit more exaggerated than I would normally dance it, just because I'm teaching it to you and I want you to very clearly be able to see what I'm doing with my body, and, and that's, good dance teacher advice um, for when you're learning something new, exaggerate it because once you learn it, you can always scale it back. But I find that it's hard for my students to really learn something if they're not going kind of to the edge of their range of motion, okay? So now, the second variation that we can use in basic three are a couple different things. One is when I'm walking, I can send the hips back before I actually transfer my weight. So I'm going and step, and step, and step. So it's like my hip going back is lifting my heel so that I can step down, and step, and step, and step, and step. Okay, just try that again and step, and step, and step, and step, and step. And now when I step, I'm not scooping forward, I'm just coming back into neutral. Back, neutral, back, neutral when I put my foot down. Back to lift the heel, neutral when I put the foot down. Back, down, back, down, back, down, okay? So that's the walking, I'm gonna go Back, down, back, down. Now, when I bring my feet together, I'm gonna do a little wave action, which is like a body roll that's only in the hips, okay? So I'm going back and forward. Back and forward, or neutral, I guess. Back, neutral. Back and neutral. Back and neutral, okay? So I'm going and step, and step, wave, 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 and step, and step, wave. Okay? So in this in both of these variations, I'm thinking more about my hips going kind of back and, and forward or back and neutral than I am side to side. They will naturally go side to side a little bit because it's hard to walk without letting your hips tilt side to side. But what we're tr consciously trying to create is a movement back and neutral, back, neutral, back, neutral, okay? So again, I'm going and step, and step, wave, and step, and step, 
wave and step, hand step, wave and step, hand step, wave and step, hand step, wave and step, hand step, wave. Okay? I will say all of these hip actions are much easier to create when you are wearing heels. Hip actions in general are easier in heels because our weight is going onto our toes, which just makes everything easier. It also helps, um, the, the hip action is often correlated with the heel of the foot, and it's easier to feel that, and, it's, and it requires less flexibility in the outside of the leg if you have height underneath your heel. And I will just say, if you're looking for heels, you have got to try Yami dance shoes. That's Y-A-M-I. Um, these shoes are Yami. They have a little tiny pillow underneath the ball of your foot. So if you're somebody that usually gets sore or swollen feet and can't be in heels for more than 30 minutes or an hour, this is the perfect shoe for you. I'm one of those people, I've got super small feet and so I find it difficult to be in heels for extended periods of time, but I can dance in these for hours because of that extra cushion that I have under the ball of my foot and all Yami shoes have that cushion because they know what we're going through when we're up elevated this high. And they're also, as you can see, super cute. They've got so many styles. They've got these dance booties, which have a street sole so that you can wear them right out of your house into the dance venue. They also have salsa shoes, ballroom shoes, men's shoes. So check them out at yamishoes.com and you can use my code dancedoc10 to get a 10% discount off of your purchase. You will not regret it. These are by far the most comfortable dance shoes I've ever had in my life and I've had a lot of dance shoes. Okay, so now we are going to try both of those hip actions with music. to do a practice routine including all of the steps and hip actions that we've done in today's video. One, because it's good to help you get these movements into your muscle memory, but it's also good practice for being able to shift from one hip action to another, which is something that I find a lot of my students have difficulty with. So this practice routine is perfect for um, helping that brain-body connection, okay? So our routine is going to look like this. We're just gonna do four of each thing um, in the order that we learned them. So we're gonna do segmented. One, two, and three, four, and five, six, and seven, eight, and reverse figure eight, two, three, Basic two with the switch, one, three, four, and five, six, and seven. Now with the circle, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Basic three, one, two with the switch, switch, and one, two, switch, and one. And now we're gonna do it with the pulse, and one, two, wave, and one, two, wave and one, two, wave, one, two, wave, and we'll start over with the segmented basic one, okay? So let's try that once, and then we will do it with music. We go one, two, and three, four, and five, six, and seven, eight, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one, two, and three, four and five, six and seven with the circle and one, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, basic three, one, two, three, and four, five, six, and seven, eight, one, and two, three, with the wave, one, and a one, and a one, two, one, two, and we can start over. Boom, bam, boom, boom, bam. Okay, let's try our practice routine now with music. So much for joining me for today's lesson. I hope that you enjoyed following it as much as I enjoyed teaching it. If you did enjoy this lesson, do check out the other online resources that I have available, meaning my Patreon page, patreon.com slash dance doctor, and my website, dancedoctoronline.com, where I offer premium courses. Um, so if you love my YouTube content, but you're tired of kind of piecemealing your learning together, um, in my courses, you can do for anywhere from uh, you know, one to three to six weeks of training with me. You'll have a cohesive lesson each day. So check out those courses, particularly if you're interested in Kizomba, check out my Body Movement Boot Camp, which is my newest course where I go through all the different parts of the body and the isolations and how to undulate and do body rolls and, and do circular actions and arm styling and all of that stuff. Um, so do check out that course. It is a six-week course. It's only $99 um, and you get a different um, lesson each day. No lesson is longer than 20 minutes because I know we're busy. We've got places to be. Um, but again, if you love Kizomba, that course would really be fantastic for you. And if you're interested in my mini retreat in Havana, email me right now, dancedoctoronline at gmail.com before all of the spots get taken. Remember, practice makes progress. And until next time, keep dancing. Body movement refers to any movement involving the spine, shoulders, ribcage, hips, and arms. Basically, every part of the body we use in salsa, bachata, kizomba, ballroom, swing, okay, every style of dancing. It's an umbrella term which includes body rolls, undulations, shoulder movements, torso isolations, and arm styling. It also refers to contractions, twisting, bounce, and dynamic shapes. In Body Movement Boot Camp, we move through the different sections of the spine, developing flexibility, coordination, and awareness. The goal of this course is increased fluidity, mobility, and beauty in your movements, which we achieve by doing one follow-along class each day for one month. 
After you finish, you can continue to incorporate the lessons into your dance practice, as the purchase of this course means lifetime access to the video lessons. If you've been feeling stiff, tense, or uncoordinated in your dancing, this course is for you. I want you to find your flow and love the way your dancing looks and feels. Don't you?